New respect at work laws are in play, just in time for all the office Christmas parties and functions. The silly season brings new safety risks for workers and managers with recent changes to work health and safety laws to include psychosocial hazards, which includes bullying, aggressive conduct, harassment and sexual harassment. Also includes off-site work events. James Ritchie is a risk and safety expert from the Mindful Risk Group, and he can help us understand what we need to know. James, good morning. Good morning. James, what are these new laws all about? Well, look, I think realistically the the laws are designed to work very, let's call it collaboratively with existing work health and safety laws, with an idea of being ultimately to create an environment at work for all workers that are physically and psychologically safe in the, is the short answer. So where do they apply? Is it, we just talking about around the office or? Look, I think it, it is an interesting one and certainly one that there's a lot of case law about in the background, which we don't have time to really go into today. But look, it, it all comes down to what they call this in the course of employment type thinking. So essentially, wherever work's happening, is a workplace and unfortunately that also includes Christmas parties and work functions. They're absolutely a workplace and those laws apply whether people realise it or not. Okay, so ultimately what, what do you think they've, they've come about from? Is it that, you know, perhaps it's been a colloquial Australian thing, you know, some idiot got drunk and tried to crack onto the, the, the co-worker or something <laughs> like that and we've kind yeah, of always yeah. laughed it off, right? <clears throat> but is this mm, kind of mm. putting a line through that saying there's nothing funny about it? Yeah, look, I think look, there's probably a few different, I guess, feeding streams that come into that, whether whether that be, look, we don't need to mention specifics, but all, yeah. all of the different harassment lawsuits that have gone down in the last few years. And then I think also separately to that, there was a, a really significant review recently called the Boland Review of WHS Laws. And so that re- was really the trigger that gave us this very strong provision of psychological or what you mentioned earlier, psychosocial safety being recognised as a, a real WHS risk for organisations and something that must be managed. Yeah, wow. So uh, when do they come to effect or is it they already are? Yeah. No, look, so we're, I think from really from when it stands now, let's say from five to seven days ago, employees have got around that 12-month period there in terms of it passing what they call it sort of royal assent process and so realistically if you're an employer listening to this now there's really a 12-month clock ticking for you in terms of getting your head square on this and getting it applied and implemented for your workplace yeah okay well look a lot of people i I reckon would assume if something doesn't happen in the actual office or outside of work hours that uh hr you know everyone dreads oh i'm calling hr hr can't do anything is that true at all no no I, I think that's that's an absolute misnomer unfortunately Phil that uh, people of you're right about the sort of laconic laid-back Aussies thinking traditionally that that's not going to get us but unfortunately it's yeah it's been clear for some time and even more clear now that we've got these respect at work laws in place again supported by the psychological safety aspect of the WHS Act that it really just reinforces anywhere where work occurs And that does unfortunately include work functions, whether they're, I guess, uh, mandatory or not, that is still considered a workplace. Therefore, all of these laws apply. Therefore, HR can absolutely get you. And I think HR is probably the least of your worries in relation to these respected work laws, to be honest. Yeah, I agree. It sounds like uh, positive. The the, the positives come out of this, what, we want to feel safer and also uh, the safety of of women must Uh, be behind Yes, look, could... Couldn't, couldn't agree more because obviously be, being the father of a, a daughter myself, I, I, I look at her ascent into uh, the workplace in the future and I think every every um, lady and every man deserves to feel physically and psychologically safe at work and that includes not being harassed by co-workers, managers, um, bullied, all of those sort of things that really, really mm-hmm. are are very clearly reflected in that legislation now. Yeah. Look, uh, we'll move on from the sexual harassment because I reckon we understand what it looks like but finally can you help us understand what psychosocial harassment might look like look i think there's it's a very good question and there's a really common misnomer 
that I've certainly dealt with over the course of my career in this space with a number of workplaces and employers over the years that disagreeing with your manager doesn't automatically mean that there's a psychosocial or a psychological uh, risk to you as a worker. Right. However, any, any occasion, and we can look at, there's a fantastic new code of practice out in both Queensland, New South Wales, and most of the states to support this now, gives you a really clear understanding of what these psychosocial risks are. So there can be things such as lack of job control, inability to feel as though that they're, they're able to put their ideas forward without being sort of aggressively shut down by their next one out up manager, any of this sort of hazing or bullying, genuine bullying type um, conduct, all of that represents um, psychosocial hazards in the workplace and things that can potentially at the worst case outcome lead to a psychological injury in the workplace, which mm. then becomes a compensable injury for the employer. Yeah, wow. Okay, James. So uh, I guess common sense should kick in, but unfortunately history will prove that it hasn't always, thus these laws exist. That's probably fair to say. And uh, leaning on the alcohol excuse at a Christmas party is not going to cut it, is it? No, no, unfortunately not. I mean, look, I'd, I'd encourage everyone to even consider as, as employers consider limiting or even removing booze. I'm certainly not a wowser, but that could be one one thing for organisations to consider. And it, it sounds silly as well, but serving food is always, I think, critical for these types of events. Sure, and yeah. Making, making sure that you're clear about start and finish times. And we, we've seen a lot of organisations move right away from the boozy Christmas party and go to all sorts of amazing positive things, like you said, that have come from the, I guess, the imminent passage of these, including scavenger hunts and team building retreats. So yeah. it doesn't always have to be about a boozy Christmas party. No, it's work, a changing of the culture for sure, for sure. James, mm. uh, thanks for bringing us up to date on this. So I appreciate your time this morning. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers. James Ritchie there. So he's a risk and safety expert from the Mindful Risk Group. So look on their website uh, for more detail on this.